Hi, we're going to download R and R Studio, and I'm going to get you started on your first couple of scripts. Really basic, but uh, let's get right to it. So just go to Google and click on Download R, or, or type that in. You're going to get the R project, the R project. So you can go straight here, or you can go to, most likely, if you're using Windows, it'll show up on the top left as a download option here, or Mac, whatever, it should default to it. So just click on this Download R. For Windows, usually the latest version is going to be up in this box. And just save the file, open the executable, and go through the steps. I didn't see any bloatware or any spyware, and it'll install R. Now, don't worry about R just yet because we're going to download R Studio as well. So let's go to Google and type in download R Studio, and it should be the first link rstudio.com products download. So it's very easy to find. So download R Studio as well. And you're gonna to get to this page and the free version. Let's just go ahead and click on that. And you can click either one. The uh, whatever's free is the one you wanna use. Same deal, it's gonna open up a link, uh, installers. So I have Windows, so I'm gonna click on the Windows version and save it, run through the steps. If you need to, pause this video and come back to it when you're done, okay. Okay, so once you've downloaded them both, now they're not going to just show up as start menus, most likely. So you're going to have to know how to navigate to them. Go to your Explorer, whatever way you do that. So File Explorer, click on your C drive, usually it's C drive, local disk, whatever that is. It's going to be under Program Files if you have Windows. And you go to Program Files and you'll see R and you'll see R Studio, both. Okay, so R is just going to be, we're going to use the back end of R and all, all of its features, but we're really going to use the, the IDE, the R Studio. So this is where R is located. It's under R64 bit, and if you click on R, you're going to get to a command prompt. It's very basic um, command prompt. You can do things like 2 plus 2 in there, and it'll give you 4. We're not going to use this. This is going to be very difficult to write scripts in unless you're somewhat of an expert. But so let's get out of R and never think about that for a while. Let's go to R Studio and let's create a link to it. So R Studio, you go to your binary and you go to your uh, down at the bottom. It'll say rstudio.exe. What I did was I just dragged and dropped it to my taskbar so I have a shortcut. Oop, didn't mean to. I don't know what I clicked on there. Anyway, so R Studio, I just click on R Studio and it opens up my workspace, my environment, my integrated development environment, so to speak. What we have here is we have the console window. That's basically the same exact thing as that DOS looking prompt window. Um, we have global environments to the top right. That'll store all of our variables and their values. And I'll show you that more in a minute. Plots, packages, all the different things down here. You're gonna see navigation panes. Let's get started right away. So like I showed you with that DOS prompt looking thing, and uh, if you hit enter on two plus two, it's gonna give you four, right? Notice nothing's up here, but if I said A equals two plus two, now we have a variable called A, and the value that's stored is four. So if I just type in the letter A and hit enter over here, it's gonna show you the, uh, well, it's gonna print out four here, and that's that, okay? now. We don't want our work so much inside this console area. So let's go to File, New File, R Script, Control Shift N. It's gonna open up this notepad looking area. This is kind of the place that you wanna store your scripts or your code. So you can have multiple lines. You can repeat them and run them multiple times. So let me start by giving you a comment. This is a comment. It will not be executed no matter what. So let's do the same thing. We're going to do 2 plus 2. We're just going to hit enter. You see nothing happens because it's just like notepad. Highlight that line or get to that line with your arrow keys or mouse. Hold control if you have a Windows. Hold command if you have a Mac and hit enter. Then you'll see it populated the console down here. So you can repeat steps 2 plus 2, uh, 8 plus well, let's do 8 plus A. We have a variable named A, so let's try that. So that should be 12, right? Hit enter, or control enter, I should say. And we've got 8 plus A is 12. Well, let's make 8 plus A. Let's store that in to a variable called um, B. So B equals 
and hit control enter. Now b equals 8 plus a. So if I type in b, control enter, it's going to equal 12 every time, right? Unless I decided to change it and I actually do, um, I can do b less than symbol dash and say let's make that equal to zero. Control enter. And now we're back at zero. So if I if I do now I can go back and forth to the console and do some testing. I can just type in B and see it should equal zero at this time, right? Because if you look up here on the top right, A is four, B is zero, right? Now if I want to rerun parts of this, I can just highlight it and it'll run just that. So it showed displayed four and then it made B equals eight plus A. So B is now, if I go down to the console, B should be back to 12. See how that works? Now, if I ran the whole thing, B is going to equal zero again because at the end of the day, B is going to equal zero. You can also do it this way, B, oh, I'm sorry, zero and store it into B. I don't use this method very often, but that'll work too. Let's do a different number so we know if it works. Okay, let's, let's do uh, 10, control enter. And now let's do uh, down here at the console, let's just type in B. Okay, so there's your 10. How do we, re how do we remove these variables? I'm going to show you that real quick and then one more thing and we'll call this one good. So we remove them by doing the RM, remove. And we will type in list equals ls parentheses, close parentheses. Okay, now they're all gone. Now I want to get you this far so you can start Googling and kind of understand how the syntax works and how the layout works here. Um, one other thing, if you do the question mark at the console and then you type in RM, it will give you all the help features, which I'm not going to go over what all this means yet, but uh, that's how you would get to them. Um, for now, Google is going to be a friend. I want to show you one more very useful thing about this uh, to get you started with more of a real world uh, situation. Is What if you had your own CSV file or Excel file that you saved as a CSV, comma separated value. If you have an Excel file with headers and you want to save it and you want to use it in R, the easiest way right off the bat without downloading any packages is to just convert that into a CSV file because R really likes CSV, comma separated values, no extra fluff in there. So I have a file that's located on my desktop. Let's go to File Explorer. Now I was going to say you can just go straight to your desktop and copy and paste the URL in the address bar, but with Windows and everything it's, it's not that simple. So let's go to our local disk C drive and start from there. I'm going to go to Users. Uh, Canton is where it's under and then desktop. Okay, so that's where my file is located is desktop and it's called test.csv. My file is located right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this URL or this address that's now an address and we're going to go up here to our console. I'm going to erase all this because we don't need it. We're going to do read.csv open parenthesis and you should see well, let's let's start back read.csv and now just let it sit there and you see this yellow box pop up that kind of gives you an idea of what kind of parameters go inside of that function so the read.csv it's pretty self-explanatory it's going to read a csv file into our studio what's the file that's the first parameter and then these other parameters like header equals true those are all optional at this point, and I'll get into more of that later on with some more um, tutorials. So header equals true, that's a default, so if you don't put anything in there, it means there's a header in there. If you don't have a header, just make that a capital false. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. So let's go ahead and put this in there. So if you have Windows, you put them in quotes and paste that URL in there. And then I'm going to show you how this is not going to work first, test.csv. It's very finicky. Um, it's going to read those backslashes as escape characters. So when I hit control enter, you see the error down here. So that's an error. And it's telling you basically that, hey, backslashes are used for special characters and it doesn't recognize them as backslashes. So make those forward slashes like I think most other operating systems would do automatically. Mac's even worse. Mac's got some weird, funky stuff going on with theirs. But um, now if I do that, I hit enter, there's my database. It showed up and it showed headers and it showed the actual data and it numbered the data with the rows. So what are we going to do with that? We're going to actually store that as a variable, say my data equals that, control enter. Now you see on the top right, my data, two observations of three variables. What are the three variables? Name, state, and city. 
two observations, observation Mark that, and observation Dave, that row. So that's how you read it in there. Um, you, can, you can do many things with, with this, like uh, you can do names, my data, and it's going to spit out, if you hit Control Enter, the header names. So that's kind of nice. But if I wanted to select, say, header, uh, the city header, well, I know it's the third one. So I can do uh, names, my data. And you can use this as an array, basically, or a vector. And you can just put in the number three in there, and it'll print out city. And you can make that equal to something as, as two. So city header, whatever you want to use it for, equals. OK, so you see down here, you have a value called city header, and it's called city. These are just examples. I wanted to get you started to where you can actually read a file of your own to make this more usable to you. Um, Feel free to comment any questions, and I hope to put some more of these tutorials out later.